There are some areas of JavaScript where, to this day, I still find them a bit confusing, even though I understand the basic idea. Recursion is one, and we talked about that in JS Quick Hits 46 and JS Quick Hits 47. Currying is another, and we'll probably get to that soon. This week, though, we're going to talk about how to speed up potentially slow functions by using memoization to cache results. At its core, memoization makes a ton of sense. You're basically saying, when I run this function with a specific value passed in as a parameter, check to see if we've already run the function on that exact value in the past, and if so, just return the same result from a cache instead of actually running all of the code necessary to generate the result. Caching is not a concept unique to JavaScript or to functions. You may have written code that, for example, grabs information from a database and then stores it in a JavaScript array to be referenced later without having to make another DB hit. That's caching. This is the same idea, but we're building it in as part of the function. Let's get started. The easiest functions to memoize are simple mathematical ones. That's because they can be written as pure functions, which is to say that when given the same input, they will always return the same output. Here's a function that multiplies two numbers. That's going to give us 32. And it does. Every time you pass those two values into the function, it's going to return 32. Now, there's no real value in memoizing this, and I'll explain why in a minute, but we're going to anyway. Here's how to do it. I'm going to be adding a lot of separators here just to make things more clear. So you can see what those should return. If we refresh, we get what's expected. The first time through, it runs the code, figures out the answer is 32, and caches that. And the next time through, it sees that our key exists in the cache and just returns 32 from the key. This is pretty stupid. We've replaced one line of code with 12 in order to get the same result on a mathematical operation that IE6 on a Windows 95 machine you bought in 1996 could probably run 10 million times in a single second. Don't do this. Memoization on simple math functions isn't worth the overhead. But it does illustrate how things work. The function is keeping its own little cache object full of arguments. In this case, a string that looks like 8 plus 4, and then the value of those numbers multiplied and checking incoming arguments against that cache to see if it already has a value for it. Oh, and one last note. You can memoize a function without having to do the whole container function thing. You can just define a cache variable outside of a function and then have that function reference it. Like this. Save that again. Rerun it, 25 and from cache 25. But that gets into keeping track of a bunch of global or at least module-wide variables. It's nicer in most cases to just enclose it. So when is memoization actually useful as opposed to just being an academic exercise built seemingly to just bloat your code? The answer is when you're going to be doing a lot of redundant mathematical work and want to just skip it and go straight to the values. One of the classic examples of this is factorials. A factorial is when you count down from a given number, multiplying the result by the next number. So the factorial of 5 is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 120. This can get big quickly. For example, the factorial of 8 is 40,320, and the factorial of 100 is 9.33262154 to the 157th power. Here's some basic factorial code that uses a recursive function. When we save this and log it, you're going to see that it shows each step to get to 6 for both of those instances of 3. Working on 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. Working on 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. Here's our memoized version. So save, refresh, 
as you can see, the first one counts down, although we're missing a console log for four because that's happening in the memo factorial function and not in the basic factorial function. And in the second case, it just logs the 24 from the cache. This can actually be optimized even more to cache and look up each individual return so that doing a factorial of five uses the cached values from four, if you've already done them. But that's beyond the scope of today's tutorial. A few other things to note. Memoization will only work with pure functions, meaning ones that, as previously mentioned, always return the same value given the same input and never have any other side effects. It also doesn't play particularly well with promises or async await, so sticking to synchronous code is best. On that note, you probably don't need to memoize XHR returns because the browser already caches those. Woohoo! Memoization's a bit tricky, especially when you throw function recursion in there. It's most useful when you're dealing with repeated data lookups or other systems in which you're likely to repeat the same functionality regularly. You want to be careful with it, since there's always a balance between CPU and memory to pay attention to. But when used properly, it can speed up your code. See you next week!